Let's return now to where we began the programme in Samoa, where the death toll from the measles epidemic has risen by three overnight to 42. Questions are now being raised about the role of the New Zealand government and whether help should have been offered following the death of two babies in Samoa last year after they were given ill-prepared vaccines. Checkpoint has repeatedly requested an interview with Foreign Affairs Minister Winston Peters for the past fortnight. We wanted to ask if New Zealand considered coming to the aid of Samoa soon to slow the spread of the measles infection. Mr Peters has refused our requests for an interview again today. Our reporters Alex Perrottet and Logan Church are in Samoa. Alex asked South Canterbury doctor Scott Wilson this afternoon about how medical staff are coping and whether help should have been requested earlier. He began by asking him how many patients were at the Lulumonga District Hospital. Look, they're, they're variable. Every day's different. Um, I think we certainly had a very busy day on Monday. Um, we saw probably around sort of two to three times what we typically see in a day on Monday. Um, over the last couple of days, it's kind of come back down to our average. You know, we're seeing sort of routinely somewhere in sort of the mid-30s through the emergency department. Um, that, that seems to be pretty consistent. Some days are a bit lighter, and we tend to make up for that the following day when you know the people that possibly couldn't make it in, you know, come come through. But yeah, we're, we're probably averaging in the mid thirties. Right. And how serious are the cases that, that are here now? Look, really, really variable. You know, incredibly variable. Um, some families who have been through it with older siblings um, are much more aware of the symptoms to look for, so they're very fortunately presenting very early when those symptoms arrive um, with, with with their younger children often. Um, but some people. You know, due to a number of different reasons, uh, I'm still presenting very late. Um, and, and yeah, th th those are, are very, very scary. And we're getting a few of them every day that require, you know, resuscitation and, and, and reasonably intensive work from the team. Um, but fortunately, we, we haven't had any, any really, really terrible late presentations for, for a few days. So most of them are, are still arriving where they're able to be salvaged and, and treated here without needing to, to go for intensive care up in the TCA. Because this is a district hospital and there's one main road here, but um, there's some villages, some quite remote villages, so I guess it's still quite a long way to travel for some families to get here. So yeah. you're finding that they've, they've, they've seen the symptoms, they try to get the kids here, but by the time they get here, it's getting pretty late. Yeah, look, travel, travel is, is a bit of a challenge, and I think it's not just from getting here, it's also if we don't think they're necessarily well enough to, um, or not sorry, uh, unwell enough to, to stay in hospital, you know, their ability to return can sometimes be a problem. So trying to work out, you know, whether sometimes we have to admit people that possibly wouldn't necessarily meet the threshold, but we're worried they couldn't get back if their symptoms got worse. And some children are deteriorating literally before our eyes. Um, and it's very hard to predict which ones they are. You know, we have children who present, you know, we look after for a couple of hours, we give them, you know, hydration and antibiotics and they seem to perk up nicely. We see them back the following day and, and they look terrible. So, you know, some of the ones that, you know, that, that we think really are, are going to do well are some of the ones that actually come back, you know, come back looking pretty unwell the following day. We've seen a lot of um, influx of Australian New Zealand help. Um, you guys have been here working hard. We, we heard from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade today that there'll be 100,000 more vaccines coming, more doctors, uh, specifically doctors that speak Samoan, which mm. makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of investment. Um, this, though, is a tragedy. There's 42 dead and that's counting. Mm. Um, and this was a problem that was around a lot long before we jumped on this bandwagon to help. Should we have been here earlier, do you think? Look, again, that would be a bit inappropriate for me to speculate. I mean, I, I was asked, you know, to come. Um, and as soon as I was asked, I put my hand up, um, as did my team. Um, exactly how those messages filtered through, you would need to address those to, to someone who was uh, involved in those discussions. Um, as I say, we, when we were asked, we put a hand up and we deployed very quickly once, once we were asked within, within a couple of days. Great, great. And then just finally here at this hospital, uh, how, how many are here and how many are in a critical condition? Can you just give us a bit of an update on the numbers? <sighs> as, as far as specific numbers go, I mean, we're, I think we're running around 18 patients at the moment in the ward. It's been, uh, we've been very fortunate. Um, the last couple of days have been, you know, at the um, at the more manageable end of the spectrum. Um, but you know, uh, overnight we could be back up at 30. You know, it's just it's impossible to tell. Um, a lot of them are very, very unwell. Um, we did transfer one um, earlier today through to, to TTM, who obviously reached a point where we didn't feel they were responding to, to the therapies that we were that we were administering. Um, we've got a few more there that are that are, you know, they're probably getting towards the the, the upper end of what we can provide in, in a small hospital like this. And that was Alex Perrottet talking to South Canterbury Dr Scott Wilson in Samoa.